What's going on everybody? Patrick here and in this question we're going to deal with the transformations applied to y equals x cubed. So we basically have to determine the equation of this function here, this graph, and this graph is the result of transformations to y equals x cubed. So how would we do this? Well, let's start off with just the graph of y equals x cubed. The basic graph we know looks like this. And we know that this point here, this saddle point, is basically happening at 0 and 0. And notice that the new saddle point is happening at negative 1 and negative 2. So we know definitely that we shifted this graph one unit to the left, right, this x value of negative 1 and then two units down. So those are the transformations you always want to start with when you're dealing with y equals x cubed. You want to see where is that new saddle point because it's going to tell you how much you shifted left or right and how much you shifted up or down. So because it got shifted one unit to the left, we know the d value, um, let's actually write the transformation values here. So the d value we know is going to be negative 1, right, one unit to the left. And then the c value is going to be negative 2. Now, in general, when we are transforming y equals x cubed, the form it's going to take is what? y equals a bracket k bracket k minus uh, x minus d to the power of 3 plus c. Right? If we take this x cubed parent function and then just generally transform it, not specifically to this question, just in general, the a, k, d, and c value. Well, when you're dealing with x cubed, you can combine the a and the k. And the way you can do that is you can take this power 3 and distribute it inside the bracket. So you could have like k cubed here, and then this would be x minus d cubed and this would be plus c. So notice how you can actually get rid of these brackets now. They're not needed because we took this 3 and we distributed it inside the bracket to this term and that term. And now notice how this a times k cubed, that's like a constant on its own. So we can actually make that into an a value itself. All right, if that makes sense. This a value and this a value are not the same. I'm not trying to confuse you here. Basically, this whole thing is like a constant in front. So we can forget about the k value and we can just deal with an a value. And that's going to help us a lot because now we don't have to worry about a k value. We can just say the k value is always going to be 1 and we can solve for the remaining a value when this is only happening when you're dealing with x cubed, remember, only for this function. It also works with x squared and x to the power 4, but with x cubed, this is how it works. You can forget about the k value. You can always make it equal to 1, and you can just solve for that a value. Okay, so now that we know that, let's, um, let's go back to this question. So Let's fill in what we know. So we got a, and then our d value is negative 1, so x minus negative 1 would be x plus 1 to the power of 3. And then the c value is negative 2. So let me put like a little border here just to separate this stuff. All right, so this function takes this form so far. So we basically took x cubed, shifted it 1 to the left, and then two units down, and we got that from the saddle point. Now we can uh, solve for this a value with one of these coordinates. So all we have to do is plug one of these coordinates in for x and y, and then solve for a. So let's use this coordinate. So if we plug in 4 for y, and then 1 for x, We can now solve for a. So we could bring this negative 2 over. 4 plus 2 gives us 6. This a would be in front. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And then dividing both sides by 8 to isolate for a, we would get 6 over 8 or 3 over 4. 
And you can also, instead of using one and four, like we did here, you can also use negative three and negative eight, and you would still get that same A value of three over four. So we're done now. So the final equation of this is three over four, uh, x plus one to the power of three minus two. So that is our final answer. All right, so one more time, when you're dealing with x cubed, first thing you wanna do is figure out what the d and the c value are, seeing where did that saddle point of zero and zero get transformed? Well, we went one to the left, two down, so d value is negative one, c value is negative two. And then you also wanna remember that the k value for x cubed can always be one because you could always factor it out and you can always just have one constant in front, that a value. So the uh, general format, general transformation format you could always use for x cubed is this here. Notice how there's no k value. And that makes our life a lot easier. There's one less constant to find. So once you plug in that d and c value into this general transformation format, you could plug in one of the other points to solve for the a value. In this case, we've got an a value of 3 over 4. You would get 3 over 4 whether you use this point or that point. You could try it yourself with this point. And that ends up being our final equation.